Life is chemistry. To be alive, you have to do certain things. You have to ingest food, you have to turn it into energy, you can repair damaged organs or cells, and you can even grow. And every single one of these is ultimately a chemical reaction. A single cell every second does about 9 billion chemical reactions in order to stay alive. But it's simultaneously mysterious because we know so, so little of it. And without understanding the molecular definition of being alive, you can't create molecules or inventions that make you be alive better. Past use of life's chemistry can inspire more modern use. One great example is artemisinin that was effective for antimalarials and has now saved millions of lives all over the world. Plants are a great resource for life's chemistry and we only know about 1% at max. And so how many more potential future medicines can we find and will be tomorrow's artemisinins? So completely redefining the lens through which we actually view life sciences is the beginning of what we will enable when we understand life's chemistry through our technology. This company was an idea in my head a little over four and a half years ago. It goes back to actually having lost my mother to leukemia back in 2003 when I was a teenager and realizing that more than nine in 10 diseases actually don't have an FDA approved treatment. The inspiration came from the realization that the number one reason that things don't work in the clinic is that things that work in the lab frequently misfire in the clinic. I realized one of the fantastic sources of new drugs from our past, molecules that came from nature that were used for thousands of years by our ancestors. Many cultures from across the world were essentially sampling their environment and seeing what made them feel better. These molecules was made by a cell, in a cell, and for a cell, and represented the intelligence of four billion years of convergent evolution. And when this idea came together, I said, great, let us go back and bring modern technology to bear and make better medicines faster from sources that our ancestors believed were powerful. Now is a fantastic time to start re-exploring nature's chemistry as a source of new medicines, largely because of the advancements in AI, robotics, and techniques. It's estimated that less than 1% of all of the molecules in nature are discovered. So the remaining 99% of molecules are what Invaders technology is all about tapping into, identifying the molecules in nature that people have not seen before. The key clinical need are the chronic inflammatory conditions these are the kind of conditions that Enveda is focusing on. We you know, have an unprecedented opportunity with AI where we can explore uh, the nature and plants through metabolomics and essentially expedite uh, the process of drug development. One of the most exciting things that we've done is figure out how we can teach computers to read and write the language of chemistry using advanced laboratory instrumentation that generates high resolution chemical fingerprints. We've taught computers to essentially translate these fingerprints into chemical structures that humans can understand. We use that to find potential drugs in plant mixtures or plant extracts. So at Inveda, we're building essentially what we call the library of life internally. And what this is, is annotations of the structure and function of all the molecules in nature. On top of our library of life, we have built a search engine. We call it Inveda Search, and internal drug hunters can look for molecules in nature and ask questions like, I'd like to see a molecule that has these specific properties. In this way, we're able to prioritize which molecules to go after without spending effort on molecules that aren't gonna be attractive. And so by the end of you know year five and a half, we have molecules that are likely to mediate a benefit and should be advanced to clinical testing. But much more exciting than just the scale of it is the novelty of the kind of medicines we're finding and the fact that our first two are scheduled to go into clinical trials by the end of this year. A clinical trial means giving something to humans. And so when we are administering something for the very first time, 
we look for any safety signals, find the right dose, making sure that we have engaged the right target. The first set of trials is they are going to validate the whole approach that Enveda has select these plant-based uh, molecules in improving these uh, disease conditions. Everything on the earth, everything has learned to interact with its environment through chemistry. And so in many ways, biodiversity is our library of all of the chemistry that's available. When we lose species, we lose access to that chemistry. We are undertaking a number of initiatives to promote biodiversity. We are meeting with multiple countries to enact biosustainable processes. Right now, we have a teammate in Nairobi meeting with um, the United Nations to learn from them about what are the best processes for sustainable contracts, and then how do we generate benefit sharing agreements so that we're not just learning from cultures all over the world, but we're giving back to the cultures that helped us identify and preserve the biodiversity that's available everywhere. We're gonna to continue to build on our library of life. So identifying more plants, as well as more readouts for function so that we can provide more opportunities for drug hunters. Our underlying technology is actually highly applicable to many other fields, agriculture, forensics, diagnostics. And so these are all areas where right now we're very focused on drug discovery, but we have the ability to expand to in the future. Advancements in AI are going to increase the quality and the quantity of the annotations that we have in our library of life. So the first two areas will be, we will get uh, faster. Uh, the second is accuracy. And so as we get more and more accurate AI, that allows us to get more and more efficient. And when we pick a molecule to go back into the plant and extract, we are right more and more often, right? The third one is as we continue those loops, those loops teach each other about where they're right and where they're wrong. And that helps us because it makes us more efficient at learning. Life's chemistry, I think, is infinitely powerful because it holds potential for a range of products across human and planetary health. Having or measuring life's chemistry will allow us to redefine health, but also allow us to redefine disease, and as a result, treat it better.